let us continue our Star Wars love with a featurette that was probably made a long time ago, but it's in the view now, the, the making of the lightsaber. It was more a symbol of a simpler time, of a time before the Empire had taken over, a time when honor ruled. So it was more of a symbol than it was an actual weapon in the movie. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. You don't believe in the Force, do you? The original concept was that the Jedi would fight with swords, and then I wanted to make it a futuristic kind of sword, so I made it a lightsaber, which is sort of a laser sword, to give it that technology edge to it. In an age of ray guns and that sort of thing, it would deflect the, the rays, and since there, the whole premise was that a Jedi was there to protect himself and not really be offensive, but be defensive, that a um, laser sword in a world of ray guns would be a perfect defensive weapon. I think there's a few interesting things. Uh, one of them, it, talking story-wise about how the, the fighting styles evolved, yeah. uh, I thought was pretty interesting because they kind of, you know, they kind of explain, well, all right, in episode four, you've got this old man and like a cyborg. <laughs> half man and they're fighting and so it's not like that impressive it's not that much of a fight but then you kind of see all right in the next movie all right now luke is starting to get his skills and uh, okay uh, and then by the time the third one rolls around he's much more developed in his skills plus there's this whole emotional thing about he's fighting his father spoilers um, How dare you? <laughs> it's fine. Uh, that's his dad? But then when we jump back into the prequels, it's like that's the prime of the Jedi, and you see Very several Jedi who are in their peak years just going at it, and it's really, really impressive. So I think that's interesting. I think that's a uh, rationalization kind of after the fact in a way that like when they were starting, uh. they couldn't get the best fight choreographer and the best stunt people and all of that. And as they got more money and went further along, the fights could be bigger and bigger and longer and more impressive. But it does work with the story in, in the long run, though. So yeah. Plus, you couldn't be like, OK, Sir Alec Guinness, we're going to need you to do a backflip right. down off this railing. Um, we can only do one take, though. So. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, because it will literally kill him. Um, so but he'll I, come back more powerful yes, than yes. I can ever imagine. So we should have done that. But <laughs> we, um, they, they explained that they wanted to do, Lucas wanted, was very insistent that the lightsaber was so heavy and it needed to be two-handed, more in the style of, let's say, a katana, because that's a two-handed weapon, or, or like waltz, a broadsword, or broad yeah. sword, a claymore, or zweihanda, like a heavy sword. And then over time, Luke gets better, so he can do it one-handed, and it's lighter now. But like seeing that fight in Empire, where like Luke is taking these big, heavy swings, and Darth Vader is just deflecting everything one-handed, is just so good. And like you see how clever and like intuitive that sort of like the the lightsaber that he designed was. Mm -hmm. I really like the scenes with him just like wailing on him. Mm -hmm. um, but they they also talked about in this featurette the. How did they make this, the lightsaber come to life on the screen, especially with 1970s technology? So at first they had reflector tape on, what was it, a light that belonged in a camera? So it's those old 50s style flashes. If you take off the reflector mm -hmm. and you just have the handle left over and you put a piece of little tape over the Graflex logo, that's Luke Skywalker's lightsaber. And those and then, things are so sought after on eBay. They are, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, as soon as that got out, actually all the vintage camera collector people hated Star Wars fans. Because oh, <laughs> they took they all, the, all the flash handles and they're now lightsabers. Um, and then uh, Obi-Wan's was a, a, a piece of a grenade handle plus some plumbing fittings and stuff. If, if you look at the very end, it's actually just a sink drain. But um, yeah, the, the, the first movie, you know, they were just using found items to make the lightsabers. And then on the prequels, they got really, really nice machined, you mm -hmm. know, lightsabers and stuff for that. But they needed, like, the, the pole part of the lightsaber. That actually is in the final cut, right? It's not fully animated over? Yeah, well, I think, the, yeah, I remember hearing about the, the, the reflective tape. They tried to do the reflective tape, and they had a really hard time with that. And they actually had to hand Roto, mm -hmm. you know, all the, the film. So this, this to, feature to make the lightsabers, that, yeah. Like the well, it's not entirely matched and almost matched, and then perfectly matched, which is very labor intensive, yes. right? If you look at some of the original uh, uh, Star Wars um, New Hope video, you can actually see the reflective tape whenever <laughs> uh, the lightsaber is like pointed towards the camera. It, the, the the beam completely disappears hmm. for some of those shots. 
There was also a really cool uh, section of this video that talked about um, the sound effects mm -hmm. for the lightsaber and um, how it was that sound, that buzz, that hum was discovered like carrying a broken tape recorder too close to a, a picture tube television <laughs> and like the feedback that it got, I was like, oh, that sounds really cool, I should, I should get that. I thought the coolest part about the sound design part is, you know, so, so they manufacture the, the different buzz and hum sort of thing, but then they showed this footage of Ben Burt back in the 70s waving a microphone in front of a speaker that's playing <laughs> that so that you get that vroom, vroom. The guy says, and it took him a year to get that down. He did that for a year. Oh, he had to do the whole, like yeah, all the I films, know, know. you know? So. They didn't show him passed out on the floor doing the final takes, kind of <laughs> on his side. Uh, uh. <laughs> that didn't make the behind the scenes. Uh, be sure to check out the full version of The Birth of the Lightsaber. It's on Star Wars' uh, YouTube channel. It's very interesting. Let us know your thoughts on the lightsaber and the Jedi way below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe.